So welcome to, um, this is the UNCG Libraries hosted webinar series on online learning and innovation. This is the second year that we've been doing this webinar series. So this webinar is on um, H5P, which is creating free, interactive, and accessible tutorials. So um, this is recorded, and they will be um, accessible through a link, which I'll share in chat in a little bit. So throughout this, you can ask questions since it's just you and me, but um, you can also throw your questions in the chat, and I'll try to monitor that as we go. So um, H5P is a, um, oops, sorry. is, you know, this free tutorial creation software. So it's um, open source and it creates HTML5 content in your browser. So open source means that um, anyone can see it on the web. So you do have to create an email address for that. Um, so it's, you know, you can use your UNCG email address or not, but it's click wrapped because of its open source nature. But that does mean that anything you put in um, H5P is accessible by anyone in the web. So you'd have to be careful about that in terms of what you're putting in your tutorials. So since it's an open source um, thing, it does come with a lot of documentation and it's pretty easy to use. So um, it's also accessible in terms of being ADA compliant. So um, they have this nice guide that they talk about all of their stuff and whether it's, um, you know, what is it, WCAG, W-C-A-G uh, supported, which means basically is it accessible or not. So these are the content types, um, which is all the different stuff you can do within H5P. So you can do accordion, um, chart. The big thing we're going to talk about today is this course presentation, which is the making the um, things accessible. But then drag and drop, a lot of this stuff is accessible. Notice that some of it's not, so you would just have to be careful in terms of using these things in the... Um, the tutorials. But looking at this list also, it gives you an idea of all the different stuff you can do with these tutorials in terms of the interaction. So note that we're going to really be going over these course presentations today, which is making these like tutorials, but you can do drag and drop, um, memory game, multiple choice questions, interactive video, um, true or false questions, quizzes, all this stuff. So we'll, we'll get into that in a second. So um, you can create a lot of different things in H5P. You just kind of saw the list, but there is 48 content types, including interactive videos, which means that you can create videos with like pop-ups and stuff um, from YouTube videos and more. So um, here are some examples of what these tutorials look like. So this is one made by my colleague um, Nora Burmeister with CCCC. It was a collaboration between a ton of librarians, but here's something you know about picking a topic. So note you can have information, textual, or images, and then you can have these quick checks, which are questions. So, you know, here's something about picking a topic. I should write about something I'm an expert in. You can just click something and say check, and it gives you your feedback right there. And then you can go through these, right? Topics can't be too big or too small. False. Let's see. There you go. Keep going. Note you can link out to things, have images, text. It is a multimodal um, type. So let's try one and get it wrong. If it's wrong, you just get it wrong there. And then you can, at the notice here is an example of the drag and drop. If it doesn't go to the right place, it will reject it. So again, it's just kind of a check your knowledge type thing. So um, notice here, you can put things in here. And again, it gives you feedback. So um, notice here, again, images, true or false, again, more drag and drop. And then at the end, you can see your total score. So this does not link to Canvas. It's really just kind of, you know, a quick thing to check knowledge. You can also do individual questions. So here's one um, from the library that I wanted to show. Um, which is similar to the one I just showed you, but geared towards our stuff. Um, so again, it gives you feedback, shows you some stuff. 
here. And again, you can see I geared it towards our library. So you can see I can put in my own images, my own questions, that kind of thing. Um, notice that they do do these videos too. Um, I don't know how a video would work well in, um, you know, this webinar format, but you can go here. And you can see how a video will have it be. You see this little icon? <laughs> And then it gives you questions within the video. So again, and then you can push continue, and the movie will keep going. So again, this works with YouTube videos and videos you've made on your own, um, so that's nice as well. This is something, again, I found on YouTube that was already closed captioned, so again, you're dealing with pretty good accessibility in terms of that. Okay. So we talked about this, but it's embeddable um, within a website, within Canvas, and it's mobile friendly. You know, so within the rich content editor in Canvas, it will embed, but it does not interact with the grade book. So you can't like grade these tutorials. It would again just be like an interaction for your students to do. So let's go into H5P. Do you have any questions so far? Okay, so here is H5P. It's just h5p.org. And then if you haven't created an account, you can create an account through h5p.org by clicking login and creating a free account. Again, it can be your UNCG email address or something different. So here you can create new content or you could see what I've already worked within. Um, so here's an example of something I've done, right, using information ethically and connecting it to APA. So um, here is the actual tutorial, but if I wanted to go in and change something, I just click edit. And then note that um, it works off of this, you know, rich content box here at the top. So it's pretty nice. It's pretty easy to use. So anything you wanted to do, it's all right there. It has settings at the bottom, behavioral settings, and text overrides. You can, you can duplicate this, duplicate a slide change things, all that stuff. You will have to push save at the bottom for it to save. So let's go and start from a um, fresh one. So you just would say create new content, name it, and then notice that you can then select from the content type. So to do an overall tutorial with all the different things, you have to do it from a course presentation. That's what it's called. And then it gives you this kind of blank canvas. Note that you can then, you know, add a text box. You can change the stuff here to a heading, heading three, change the size here. and then go from here. So here is my text. It's pretty easy. It works so like a lot of other things. If you wanted to add in an image, you can add it, you know, from here, from your desktop or wherever. I usually just add it from my desktop. We'll just use one of these images. And then note it gives you this alternative text and it makes it required, which that's what makes the images accessible. You can also add hover text, comments, have it display or not display. And then say done. And then there it is. And you can just drag it around. I'm just dragging and dropping it throughout it. There's my daughter. That's me. Notice you can link to other things. You can add in video, audio, slides. Um, and then here's where you would add in the interaction. So if I wanted to add in a question, I could say, you know, since my daughter is right next to me. True, comments, and that's it. It's that easy. And so now I have a question built into my tutorial. So if I wanted to add in a slide, I can say new slide, I can clone this one, I can change the slide background, move it left, move it right, that kind of stuff. So it's pretty easy. And then when I'm ready, I can click save, and then, um, it has saved.
So to see, you know, this is actually the live um, tutorial right here, this root URL. So if I want to see it live, here it is. And then notice from here, here's my tutorial. I mean, this was really simple. That's how easy it is. So if I wanted, I'm logged in so I can edit from here, but note also it gives me the embed code right here, which is iframe. So I can take this and I can embed this code right here into a um, into Canvas, into a page or an announcement or anything like that. So I'll show you really quick what it looks like in Canvas if you wanted to throw it in there. Um, note that you can do um, you can do individual pages or you, you can do these whole tutorials or just one question. So if you just wanted to add one true or false question or one multiple choice question, all of this right here is text that I added in Canvas, right? But then I added this one little question here at the end just to have a little bit of interaction on my page. So here's something where presenting someone else's work as your own can result in the following. So you can just have them fill this out, check, and then they give, it gives them feedback right there. So, and then here, they can move on to the next page, your students. So, notice you can also add in a whole tutorial. So here's one on using information ethically, and then they can go through the whole thing all within Canvas, right? There you go. Okay. So to do this within Canvas, you would just need to go to a page, right, anywhere within Canvas, and then click Edit. And then this should look familiar, right? This is a rich content editor. You just need to go to the HTML editor and take the embed code from either your question or tutorial, get that iframe code, and then put it right there and then push save, and it does everything else for you automatically. So notice here that with the question, the one question option, click edit. Again, so here's my text that I just added into Canvas onto the Rich Content Editor. If I want to add an uh, iframe at the end of that, here's this one little frame from HTML from H5P. Notice that it's not just Canvas, it works anywhere with an HTML editor. So here is an example of how we've embedded this on a web page, one of our libguides. So see it works within there. They can take the question straight within here and move on. Okay, so are there any questions so far? Yes, can I ask you, can you, can you use this um, also with, you said you can insert uh, an audio, can you use this to, to explain the presentation while the student is, is going through? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can just, if when you're in the editor, you know, when you're creating the content, there is this audio button right here, and it's, upload a file, you have to like, you know, do it outside of um, H5P and it has to be under 16 megabytes, so it would have to be pretty um, small, but you can also link to an external service. So if you're interested in that, you could talk to your, to me or your, I, I would talk to your ITC, um, but so you can't put a lot of audio in there, but you can put a little bit of audio in there. I would, um, if you're going to do audio, you could put it and use it in Canvas. You could put your audio within Canvas, you know, here, too. Like you could upload a file or record yourself right here and do it that way. Does that answer your question? Okay. Yes, thank you. So that's really the major thing. I just wanted to showcase how it works. Um, I do want to put a couple of disclaimers on here. 
Um, so H5P did have a downtime in March of 2018. Um, it's a free open source service, so you know there's no tech support. So if it goes down, you're kind of on your own. So we typically recommend to use this as kind of a fun interaction because if it goes down, right, you don't want to have to be panicked and be like, oh, everything's not working. So that's why using it, you know, it's just like one question like this. If it goes down, it's not a big deal because you still have your content all within Canvas. Um, another thing is that um, you can pay for the H5P service in order to get technical support and to have um, a hosting solution so that they wouldn't go down. Um, it costs money, um, but there's rumor that if you pay for this, it will also interact with Canvas. But if that's something you're interested in, you could talk to your department and go that route. Um, and then also, like I said, just to remember that it's, uh, you know, that you, uh, it's open source, so people can take your stuff from online, so don't put anything, you know, that you wouldn't want people to reuse. Um, think about it as like it's just open on the internet, so again, it would be easily accessible for your students even outside of Canvas, so, you know, you have to think about that in terms of academic integrity as well. And then um, you can reuse content, so if you know someone who's doing some stuff in H5P and you wanted to get their stuff, you could and then it's just appropriate to give the original creator credit. So that's it. That's just, I just wanted to give a quick overview of what it was. Um, you know, feel free to create an account and play around with it. It is, like I said, click wrapped at UNCG, so it's okay to use. Um, and that's it. Are there any other questions? Okay, great. Do you think this is useful for you guys or that you might want to use it? Yes, I think it's it's a it's a nice tool. Why not? I will play around and see and see how I can use it in my courses, of course. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, that's it. Short and simple on a Tuesday morning. Hopefully my daughter wasn't too loud in the background. <laughs> and uh yeah, let me know how it goes. And that's it. So I do want to stop for a second and throw you this link to where all the webinars live. Um, so hold on and let me get that for you. UNCG.com. And I'll throw it in the chat. You're welcome to share it with um, your colleagues in LLC or the Spanish department. There it is. I put it in the chat. So note that from here, we have two, you're, right now, this is the online learning innovation series. Um, so the next one up in this series is on Canvas Arc, which is interactive video, you know, creating discussions around video within Canvas at UNCG. Um, it's going to be hosted by Amanda Shipman in IT and Denise Cowerton, in, um, I, both from ITS. So the next one up for the um, research and application webinar series from the library is on researching and finding newspapers by Rachel Sanders. Um, and then there's more on top of that as well. So um, from that link I threw you in the chat, it's all there. So um, you can sign up, see more information, and then also recordings. So when the recording of this is available, I'll send it to you over email, and then I'll send it um, you know, to everyone who missed it as well. And it will be on that LibGuide. So OK. OK, thank you so much. Yeah, have a great day. Thank you, you too. Bye.